in Haiti since the earthquake. Um, I've got a, a couple of questions for you. One, um, you said you were going to share a little bit more about your child-focused um, transformational piece, and I would love for you to if you have a, just give us a capsule of that. Um, secondly, um, I'm extremely thankful for the emphasis on justice um, and, and the two schools, or the two sides to justice. Um, I specifically, in Haiti right now, I'm working with the Rest of Ed Freedom Foundation uh, with a State Department grant uh, on trafficking in persons. And we need, <laughs> and we work together with World Vision, by the way, we're in all of the same task forces there. Um, we need people in, in the states to understand what exactly it is that we're doing. Um, and so there seems to be sometimes that breakdown uh, between what the actual is out in, you know, in the field of Africa or Haiti or wherever, and then the actual or the perception of that. So I appreciated your use of those words, uh, the public perception. Um, and I don't know if you can speak any more to that or not, or if time is too limited, but those are the two areas. I okay. appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Well, just in terms of World Vision's transformational development model. Uh, there's certainly people in the room that could speak to that probably better than I can, but um, essentially, we try to come alongside a community and help the community identify what its own needs are in the areas of health, education, water, sanitation, um, economic opportunity, et cetera. And we try to take a very holistic view of fighting poverty and helping communities lift themselves into greater self-sufficiency, that you can't just deal with one sector oftentimes. You've got to look at the connections between these various sectors and also between people's lack of access to basic services that can enable them to live a life that's more full and, and healthy. Um, we make a 10 to usually more like 15 year commitment to a community when we go in and we only go in with an invitation. So the first step as we identify a community that's vulnerable is to speak with community leaders, to share with them what our model looks like and what the responsibilities are associated with becoming a partner of World Vision. We identify local partners that can help us be implementers of some of our programs. And then you know, we work with them over this long period in order to develop the overall approach and then adapt that approach over time. Um, it's child focused because our focus is on children and we believe if the children are thriving, the community is gonna thrive. We also connect individual children who are registered to donors in the United States. Some of you in this room may even be a World Vision child sponsor, and if you are, thank you. <laughs> um, but basically, what that does is it enables a donor to connect to the life and story of an individual child. I talked about how statistics are overwhelming. And so, you know, child sponsorship has been a brilliant way to help break down these overwhelming issues and really help connect people to an individual child. The funding that a family in the United States gives for that child does help that child, but also helps the entire community. It goes in to support all these programs that are about community transformation. And so, you know, we don't plan to do it perfectly, but we've learned a lot over the years, and it's really tied in, at least from a spiritual, theological sense, from a real commitment to an incarnational form of ministry, and to also from a more kind of scientific sense, trying to build on evidence and best practices and then scale those up to a larger level. Um, your other question about kind of, you know, some of the challenges associated with what's happening on the ground versus maybe what gets reported or kind of information that's out there. I mean, certainly Haiti's been a real challenge in that regard. Um, you know, I, I know some people, unfortunately, jokingly call Haiti the Republic of NGOs, mm -hmm. um, in part because there's a huge presence of NGOs, and you've had a very weak central government. You've had, obviously, multiple coups and a lot of turmoil, the earthquake, most recently. But I, I think it's crucial that we push ourselves as NGOs to become more transparent and accountable about how we do our work and how we spend our money. And it's incumbent upon us to be much better coordinated than we have been before. Uh, I think a lot of efforts were made to better coordinate efforts around the earthquake, certainly was not a perfect example of good coordination, but I think some lessons have been learned. 
And you know, as we go into future emergency situations or, or, or even in terms of long-term development, it's crucial that there's better coordination and better harmony across programs. Um, that's happening much more at the government level in part because many of us have been pushing for a pretty strong aid reform agenda. And some of these broad principles you probably heard, uh, heard about, about local ownership and being results driven and you know, making sure there's a country plan all tie into that. And I think if we move more in that direction, we can ensure that everyone is playing their role and is doing it in a, a more effective way.